Welcome back. Welcome back once more. This is Sunday edition here on KTN News. Uh, we did talk about the Jubilee campaign machinery on the show last week. Let's now talk about uh, the uh, machinery of the National Super Alliance. Our senior political affairs reporter Duncan Hamba did delve into that and now reports. Aware that this could be his final stab at presidency and with the major opposition parties rallying behind him under the National Super Alliance, Raila Odinga is reported to have assembled a thorough and robust campaign machinery that he believes will deliver a knockout to Jubilee's President Uhuru Kenyatta in August. The core team, which is the National Campaign Steering Committee, will be led by ANC's Msalia Davadi and will be deputized by Senator Johnston Mudama and Ogla Karani together with a Ghanaian expert. I can tell you that uh, we shall not rest uh, from now henceforth until the election is won. A second battalion is Raila Odinga Presidential Campaign Center that is based on Church Road in Westlands, headed by Willis Otieno and has a staff of over 300, among them economists, political strategists and scientists, researchers, statisticians and analysts, as well as experts believed to be from Ghana and Germany. Economist David Ndee has been very instrumental in NASA's activities. If Jubilee can do what they did in December in Parliament, bringing policemen, fighting, what are they going to do if we allow them to have a supermajority? A third unit which will serve as NASA's NAV Center of Data and a call center as well is based in Lovington. Their duty is linking all candidates and the campaign center. It is this unit that is responsible for assembling presidential agents for all the wards in the country, with NASA having announced it will employ and adopt a polling station strategy by deploying agents in all polling stations across the country. A fourth team is NASA Secretariat at Capitol Hill that is under High Court Advocate Norman Magaya, who is the Chief Executive Officer while former P.S. Andrew Mondo is the chief of staff. It is here at Capitol Hill where NASA principals meet regularly to strategize and make reviews of campaign programs. ODM, nyinyi tumemkabidhi, tumemkabidhi candidate wenu jukumu kubwa. So, to whom much is given, much will be expected. You have to protect the rest of the NASA family is looking up to you. The fifth unit is Media Center, manned by Kathleen Openda, who will be joined by two other TV personalities. NASA believes all factors remaining constant. They have what it takes to wrestle power from Jubilee. We know where, you know, we should target our uh, campaigns when and how. Uh, and this well-oiled uh, campaign machine, uh, as it unravels, uh, people are going to see something that uh, has not been seen for quite a while. It's not about the money. It's about the resolve of the Kenyan people to remove the Jubilee government. The August election has been dubbed as a rematch between Jubilee and NASA, given that it is the same pair that will face off just like in the 2013 election, in which only 8,000 votes tilted the scale in favor of Jubilee to achieve the required threshold of 50 plus 1. Duncan Hemba, KTN News. All right, that is uh, just a bit more meat uh, from what has been in the public domain of uh, the, the campaign strategy of uh, the National Super Alliance presidential candidate Raila Odinga. Um, Dismas, uh, what, what do you think about, about that? Who's uh, uh, 57 days to the elections? Um, do they have the winning formula from where you sit? Well, it seems to me that NASA has got a very solid uh, strategy. And you recall in the past they were accused of uh, not offering uh, solutions. And you'll notice during the last meetings they were adopted that strategy of offering a solution. Like uh, when they were in McQueen, they said they're coming up with a food security policy. 
which probably is a good idea, but uh, the, that forum, the people who attend those rallies don't care about policy. They're interested in uh, Vitenda Willi and other emotional drama. And also they did the same in Western Kenya when they said they were launching a policy. But the biggest challenge in my view for NASA is the use of uh, helicopters. And on that regard, you have to give a jubilee, <coughs> jubilee a part of the back. Like when the president was, was in parts of uh, Rift Valley and Akuru Nyandarwa, he actually had his motorcade and he would stop at uh, shopping centers, at villages, and address people. That is uh, more effective because now you are able to create an emotional connection with your voters. But for NASA, what they do is they get into the helicopters and we don't know who is financing them. They jump from one place to another. They hop, they do quick meetings, and uh, they take a walk. They would be well advised to start doing those uh, convoys. Because, you know, people, for some reason, Kenyans, we love seeing those uh, long motorcades, seeing policemen, people jumping around, and then you make an emotional connection to your voters. That would be the first observation. The second one, now everybody knows that our NASA is united. Again, there is no serious return on investment when you have the five principles in uh, one platform. When you have all the five principles, say, in McQueen addressing one rally, they're delivering the same message. At this stage, I think all the principles have uh, matured. They can decide to cover a particular region. You have every principle going in uh, a different direction. That would make it uh, very easy. And um, the, the only thing which they've not done with a lot of success is to keep on reminding Kenyans of the failure of uh, Jubilee. I think Raila Odinga has lost the ball. You recall up, up to six months ago, Raila was uh, coming up revealing a corruption scandal every day. And uh, you know that's one of the things which is going to decide the outcome of this election. I think it's time for him now to keep on reminding uh, people who are not necessarily his uh, supporters, uh, the so-called uh, undecided or independents, mm -hmm. what life is going to be during uh, his administration, the failure of Jubilee. Because if you're telling us to wake up early in the morning, and you know he's telling people to do so many things. He's telling people not to have sex on the 7th of uh, August. So he needs to give Kenyans a very good reason as to why they shouldn't engage in sex, as to why they should abstain and vote for him. <laughs> he, he needs to give uh, people a very solid reason. Because uh, for Kavemba and company, the Jubilee is giving us a track record. They're saying for the last four and a half years, this is what we've been able to deliver. We've brought our fourth uh, SGR. We're working on uh, unemployment in as much as up to 70% of the Kenyan youth are unemployed. But they're trying to give us a, a track record. Mm. Now, the <clears throat> NASA campaign team should uh, make sure that Raila Odinga is associated with uh, pleasure. That for everything unacceptable in Kenya, they should... Uh, they should uh, make sure that everything bad in Kenya, all the pain in Kenya, is associated with, uh, with Jubilee and uh, Kavemba specifically. Because, like, for instance, Kavemba told us a few days ago that now you can, if you go to any supermarket, you can get that unga, two kilograms for 90 bob. If you send your reporter today right now to go and buy for you that unga, he will go to 10 supermarkets, I actually did he will not find the unga. And it's becoming a tragedy, and I know Kavemba is sharpening his uh, tools right now. It's a tragedy that uh, it will cost you up to 1,000 bob if you're driving to get that unga, the one for 90 bob. Because you drive to supermarket A, supermarket B, supermarket C. And when you're lucky to find the unga, most supermarkets are telling you, you have to do purchases above a certain amount of money. That you will not just go to the shelf and pick your two bags. You have to do additional shopping. And you know, this is very good fodder for NASA. These are the kind of messages they All need right. to be reminding people. Right. Outside the ethnic numbers, which are obvious. Okay, let, let, let's, let's, before we continue, let's hear from William, who is calling us from Mombasa. William, uh, good morning. What is your take on NASA and what they are doing? 57 days to the elections. Hello, William. Can you, can you hear us? I hear you very well, uh, Ben. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. Go ahead. Um, um, I, actually, I wanted to remember uh -huh. on something I, I had him talk, uh, talk about Bungoma. About Bungoma. I want to take us back to Bungoma. No, no, All right, go ahead. Some, some, something quickly, eh? Hello? Hello, Ben. Yes, go ahead. Go ahead. We can hear you. I'm telling Kamemba that uh, if he looks at 2013 election, you look, look at uh, the Bungoma people actually voted for Lusaka not because of New Ford Kenya, but it was actually because of uh, the, the other opponent guy who was actually an outside of Bungoma. So they voted for, for Ken Lusaka as one of their own. And this time, it is actually repeating the same. So tell Kamemba to understand the Bungoma politics is very different. And for this uh, NASA thing, NASA Jubilee thing, actually the ground, you look on the ground, is all about, it's all about uh, the, the, 
economic, the economy, people are really going through a lot. And I can, I can assure you for free, we can dance around, do everything, but at the end of the day, this election is going to be decided by the poverty. Kenyans cannot afford these things. So tell, tell my friends, my friend Kavemba, not, not to judge by helicopters and what. Kenyans cannot put food on the table. That is, what, that is what, that's what is going to determine the election here. Do you want to say something to William? Uh, what, what I want to say to William is first I admitted that Raila got over 51% of the Bungoma vote and uh, that Mudavadi also had a substantive vote. That, that was my point. It, it, oh, it, right. is a, it is not that I said that uh, Bungoma is NASA. No, Bungoma is Jubilee, but that we stand a good chance of getting a substantive vote from Bungoma unlike any of the other Western counties. All right. Yes. Uh, we have another caller still from the coast, and that is uh, David, I believe. David, good morning. Uh, Mike. Michael, Michael. Sorry, good Michael. Morning, yes, yes, go ahead, sir. Uh, morning to our panelists out there. Now, I want to make a few very quick points. First of all, I want to talk about the Jubilee Party. I've heard the strategist out there, Mr. Kavemba, talking about Jubilee as. Hello? Yes, we can hear you. Go ahead. Yes, yes, yes. I'm talking about the Jubilee Party. Yes. Uh, the Jubilee Party, as uh, our strategist out there is saying, has no difference at all with what NASA is presently because initially they were going to form one solid party, but they realized too late that they have to come up with their coalition, probably some form of argument like NASA did, but just the same because we have now the main party is Jubilee, then affiliates, Kanu, PNU, blah, 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 blah. So uh, the fallacy that we have a Jubilee Party as a single large party in this country is just uh, a hogwash. Now let's come to another point. We're talking about Rift Valley. Rift Valley, for sure, is not as the way it's being projected out there in the media. It's not Rift Valley does not really mean that uh, Kalenji is highly cosmopolitan. Therefore, uh, we know when referring to Rift Valley, we should also look at it as a cosmo, highly cosmopolitan region. Therefore, it's not a solid Kalenji voting bloc. Another thing you want to the Eugene Wamala uh, factor. Uh, someone has already talked about it, but. That you think I don't believe that. Uh, I mean, Eugene doesn't really have the clout that I've had Mr. Kavemba try to talk about. It's not real because, um, of course, we understand what he was standing for in 2013 and what he stands for now. And I don't believe that the probably the, the votes that could have gone his way are still obtained. So, uh, uh, different story. But one important thing is that the media should keep on check politicians. We've had some utterances in say what was going on in Western Nigeria the other day, they are not good for the nation. So we are suggesting that as a media, you have to ensure that the people, uh, those who try to come up with those kind of utterances, uh, let's, let's come up with a, with a good information, with some uh, better, better, better information for the nation. The, the politicians were trying to come up with insinuations like threatening other communities that is not right for the nation right now because the temperature, we all need the country. After, uh, uh, after after the 20 after the ogre uh, the ogre state uh, election so uh, those are uh, it's a very very important point about the national unity the cohesion and all that stuff thank you thank you michael very important points and of course we'll continue to keep uh, checking what the politicians are saying and putting them uh, holding them to account over what they say and we have con we have done that in our uh, news coverage and, of course, our political talk shows. And we, we were on, 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 the NASA, on the NASA issue. And uh, l l let me throw this to you, Hasmon. The, the, the same issue that Jubilee are facing, what we are talking about in, in the Rift Valley, the issue of independence versus the candidates uh, that belong to the Jubilee party, NASA have the same thing. Uh, when Raila Odinga campaigns of urges people to vote six-piece, he puts the independent candidates in, his, in these particular places at loggerheads with him, be, uh, saying that you just focus on the presidential vote, leave this, the, rest, the rest to us. How big is that problem? I think it's a big problem, uh, and, and uh, it, it puts Raila Odinga in a very precarious position where he has to balance between his supporters, who lost in the, in, in the primaries and uh, independent candidates at the moment, and getting their voters to vote for him. And I think the biggest challenge is not uh, who he campaigns for. The biggest challenge for him right now is to what extent are the supporters of these independent candidates going to turn up and vote. And uh, looking at uh, the communication and the body language of uh, 
the right honorable Raila Odinga, you get a sense in which there are places where he goes and he knows that I have no control here, like Kakamega, I can't meddle. But there are places like Migori, Kisumu, Sia, you realize that he's sending certain signals that uh, uh, from where I sit, uh, in a way, tends to spark some uh, kind of, um, you know, sense of urgency and sense of call to action among uh, the supporters of these independent candidates, uh, in which case he's simply telling them that you need to come out and vote. Because one, uh, he said that, you know, everyone is, is, is uh, ODM does not have a problem with independent candidates. Then the second time he said that, you know, uh, ODM needs to be very strong in parliament and uh, folks should vote six pieces, especially in uh, rural, uh, in, in Luo Nyanza. And to me, it's, it, it appears like he's just trying to antagonize some of these independent candidates so that their supporters are sparked to action to go and vote. And I can tell you, even with the threats that we see on social media with supporters saying that, oh, Raila is saying this, now you're going to support who, it cannot happen. The fact that they are sparked to go and vote on the voting day, you can rest assured that that is Raila's vote. What and, a turnout. And, yes, yes. Yeah. What's your take? Mm -hmm. of, of course, first, I'm very happy about what is happening because, uh, you know, you're, you're looking at it from a very different angle. I'm not looking at it from that angle. Personally, if I am asked, the independence in NASA are not the problem. I want to ask you this. For instance, when Raila stands and says that you vote six piece, what does it mean? We have WIPA candidates, we have Ford Kenya candidates, we have CCM candidates. They are competing amongst themselves at the lower levels other than the presidency. Don't you think they will feel cheated? It's, it's very patronizing, uh, even considering that he is ODM. Then here I am, for instance, vying in Nairobi as a women rep on a WIPA ticket. Then you come to Nairobi and tell people we want six piece. What, you are alienating WIPA, you are alienating Ford Kenya. I want to say this, that according to me, the issue really in NASA, the unlikers who have an issue with our independence, because they are probably the most active wing that is Jubilee allied as compared to the other parties, them, they have, you need to know that even Wetangula himself has raised an issue that ODM is insisting on fielding a candidate for candidates. Senate. That's where the battle is. The battle is not with the independence. Let's first be clear. In Kakamega, for instance, we have Oparanya, ODM. Mm. We have Boni Alawale, is Ford, Ford Kenya. Kenya. They are both NASA. So when you go there and say that you want six picks, what are you saying? Ben, so I believe I that that, right. that fight, no, and, and I want to illustrate my point. <laughs> In the last election, 2013, yes. there are 45 constituencies that Raila won the presidency and lost the MP seats. Not because of any other reason, but because of this same mistake that they've repeated. That's why I'm happy with Jubilee, that actually, for us, there were only five constituencies that Uru won and lost their MP seats because they tried as much as possible, even in 2013, to, to, to harmonize the URP, TNA sort Those of competition. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I want to finish, then I give him the chance. So <laughs> this time they have repeated the same mistake. One thing I can assure you is that, as leave alone the presidency, mm -hmm. I can assure you that Jubilee will have a majority in the National Assembly and in the Senate. Courtesy of that one masterstroke of ensuring that they come together as one party, unlike NASA, that actually in court there were three, now there are five. It is a bigger problem. I, I agree with you that Jubilee is likely to, it, 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 it seems to have sorted a few problems. Uh, places like Lagata where Korir lost simply because of TNA and URP. Yes. But then, I want to make it clear that uh, at no point did we see Raila Odinga come to Nairobi, go to Kakamega and say that you must vote six piece. And, you know, it is important to understand that in Kakamega, Raila has gone repeatedly and he has not said that you need to vote for all ODM. For the simple reason that he understands that in Kakamega there are other political parties that are strong and those political parties are supporting him. And to the extent that they are supporting him, he will leave the people to decide. But even if uh, it was somebody else, you go to your stronghold in Luo Nyanza, I mean, for, for, for clarity's sake, you also need numbers in parliament. You need governors. You have to tell your people that to the extent that you are in a party that I'm the party leader and you support me, vote for my people. And I think that them. message, that message really has been clear. Let, let, yeah. Let's hear from Chesarek. <laughs> Benson, this sibling <laughs> rivalry that Mutinda is talking about in NASA and uh, compared to what it ha is happening in your party where independents are feeling that the, pres the president, deputy president, the Jubilee party leadership should not uh, campaign against them. Who is, uh, who is having the bigger problem? Uh, ben, I think, I think there is one uh, tragedy that the court or now NASA is, is, is doing again. 
which is actually importing foreigners to come and do the strategy here about the, the you remember in 2013, they had a gentleman from United States called Dick Morris who came and tried to run the, the court strategy and it backfired. And what they are doing actually is going to do it the same again. If you, got, if, you, if you come here on the crown and you see what's happening, uh, if you don't have good stronghold, here, here in North Rift, for instance, the strong candidates, you are either in Jubilee or independent. The rest of the, of, of the parties, actually, I can tell you they're not there. So what I can say is whoever will have a good ground game, some of the things that one of the panelists has addressed, that the president and the deputy president are actually going on the ground addressing these issues. Yes, they may not have achieved everything, uh, for, for when they promised 2013, but they are actually addressing them. Some of them, they have done it maybe halfway. If you look at what is happening in court and the, 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 the disunity that it is happening, whether it is, it, is, it is in Fort Kenya, it's in ODM, quite frankly, you don't know who might emerge. But now, at the end of the day, at the, uh, on August 8, it will be who will have the majority of the say or who will have addressed the issues. If they cannot, if God or, or NASA per se cannot up address the issues, especially the pertinent issues, and be powerful in the messaging, then I doubt if they will do anything to Jubilee. Right. Ben, uh, Chesarek raises a, a very interesting issue. That NASA has got our foreigners as advisors. In the story by Kayemba, that are the Ghanaians and German advisors. Mm -hmm. If you're running a presidential campaign, you need to get resources from anywhere in the world. If they're in Ghana, if they're in Germany, if they're in South Africa, you bring them to buttress your campaign. And the same is the case with uh, Jubilee. They've got guys who assisted uh, Trump manage his campaign, who are assisting them uh, look at the numbers. So wherever you get your advisors, yeah. <laughs> they could, I, don't know, I, I think they're from Britain. I don't think they're Russians. Russians have got an entirely <laughs> different story. So wherever you're going to get your resources from, right. even if it's in uh, Tanzania, wherever it is, you go get your resources, assist you for a campaign. That's number one. The number two, reloading has to take a decision. Whether he actually wants to become president as a preferential number one, but he wants to have majorities in these houses. Because if you want to become a president, encourage anybody and everybody who is supporting your campaign to come on What's board. What's the priority in the Kenyan system? In my view right now, if he just wants to have a parliamentary majority and remain as a senior citizen, then he can antagonize independence. But if he wants to become a president, he needs to embrace all the independents who are campaigning for him. If you become a president and you don't have a majority, you can easily cut deals with the majorities in the two houses and it works. But the fundamental thing that you see coming out in this campaign for Raila Odinga, and maybe it's because of the resources that he's putting together, a number of people, you are beginning to see that when he goes out to campaign, he's now been saying this campaign is not about Raila Odinga, it's not about uh, Uru Kenyatta. That in the elections we are going to, it's about you and I as a Kenyan, as a citizen. That as the President Kenyatta, as an um, administration, mm -hmm. made your life much better the last uh, four years. And he's beginning to give very solid examples. And I was in... Uh, I, I, I've been studying him, and he gave an example of a gentleman who used to work for a multinational. Mm -hmm. And the multinational closed down two years ago, right. and the fellow had taken a mortgage. Now the fellow is in a crisis, because the wife is saying, we are not going to move out of Kileleshwa. You have to look for an alternative source of income. So the wife is lighting a fire on this uh, poor gentleman, and... Uh, the marriage is about to collapse. Because the gentleman says, let's move to another neighborhood where we can get rental income from Kilelesho and pay rent. But this gentleman says no. And uh, a certain gentleman went and said, because you're in trouble, I'm giving you some money to go and buy unga. Because now you don't have any income. Because right. the lady is a housewife. Right. But even when they're looking for this unga, they cannot access it. And by taking the campaign to that level, we now will start to de-ethnicize our campaigns and start discussing policies. Right. That who is coming up with policies to make your life more interesting. I want us to talk about some fi one, fi one final thing in this Jubilee versus NASA politics. Now, in 2013, uh, in Kisi region, the larger Kisi region, uh, the Jubilee coalition then did get about 30% thereabout of the vote there. Uh, this time around, we have seen... Uh, Jubilee trying to make inroads in Kisi. It, it has not been going very well from what we've seen from the leaders trying to decamp uh, to Jubilee, then decamping back to the ODM side. Now, Jubilee were in Kisi this past week, uh, making a few promises, issuing a few checks to internally mm -hmm. displaced persons who are reintegrated into the Kisi community. Let me start with you. Well, let me start with you. I'll come to you last. <laughs> <laughs> I know it'll be other CK. Yeah. Uh, is it working? Where, 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 where do you see this, these efforts by Jubilee in Kisi and Yamira counties bearing fruit? Which fruit is it going to bear for them in, on, the, on the 8th of August? Now, the, 
sessions of Kisi were very happy because you know the IDPs, the integrated IDPs in Kisi, the, not the entire Kisi nation, have been forgotten for the longest time. So people were happy that at least uh, President Kenyatta has remembered that there are actually IDPs in Kisi and is giving them a, a bit of cash. Now what they're expecting is not the dummy check, they want to see the actual cash land in their pockets. But as soon as uh, the president did that, they went back and started asking questions. That we were being given 50,000, while members of other communities were given as much as 400,000, others were given title deeds, so they were given land, and others were given houses. So they're saying, 10 years later, the best you can do is to give us 50,000. We expected much better from this. But again, you know, that kind of argument doesn't make a lot of sense because he would have just decided to ignore you in totality so that you don't even get the 50K. At least he's remembered you. But there's a section saying, wait a minute, are we inferior in Kenya? There are members of other communities who are affected. They got a 400,000, a title deed, and land. And then the biggest challenge in Kisi, is the Jubilee's entry strategy in Kisi has been a, a successful failure for one reason. There is used top public servants without political capital to try and make inroads. Right. And these guys are parastatal heads, chairman of parastatals. So when they go to the village, they do not know how to interact. Now in this case, not Wanjiku, but say Mora. They don't know how to create right. a, those conversations. Hezbo. Yes, do you agree with what he's saying? And what, what is the impact of that on Jubilee politically? I, I think I want to agree or disagree. Because if you look at the Kenyan voter, the Kenyan voter is conditioned to expect handouts. And I don't, I don't think the bulk of folks in Kisi look at that as compensation for, for, for uh, displacement. Because I think they had since moved on. Ten years down the lane, I think they look at 52,000 as something really, really major. And to that extent, I think Jubilee has a reason to celebrate. However, I, I tend to believe that uh, maybe Kavemba will help me here. There is a way in which I don't understand the Jubilee strategies because they tend to do certain things that expose their underbellies so much. They do good things politically, but in politics you may want to ask yourself, if I do this, what are the consequences? And you only do that whose consequences you can mitigate. And I think Jubilee in Kisi expose themselves too much and I don't think they can mitigate that. You look at the comparisons that guys are making right now, it's a question of IDPs elsewhere were given 400,000, they were given land, some were given 400,000 and land, some were given both. So when you do that calculation, you may want to ask yourself, what was the threshold that made President Uru Kenyatta the president right. without a second round uh, uh, voting? It was 8,000. So to the elite that probably did not go to Kisi and is watching that and is listening to the conversations, they are thinking uh, probably it could have been better. And then another thing that Jubilee never thought through is the fact that why now, you know, you make it look like it's a political issue, that you only go to the Gusi community when you're looking for votes. But democracy as it were, when you do the right thing within the time that you're in power, when you go looking for another mandate to be in power, it becomes easy. So All there right. are people who are asking themselves, if you politicize our community, we have an alternative. And the alternative is not to vote for you. Why now? That is a question. Yeah. In, under, in under one minute. Please. Well, why, why now is a response to an issue that has always come up whenever the government tries to engage the Kisi electorate. That there is this issue of post-election violence that left some of our people as IPPs, and yet some were compensated elsewhere, and somehow ours were forgotten. So that is an issue that has always been coming up, and I commend the president for, it doesn't matter what time, for having responded to an issue that has been constant in any of the meetings with the Kisi leadership. So I want to commend him for that because better late than, than never, that he at least did something. The other thing is that this thing is being politicized and the truth of the matter is that if people want to be objective, they'll agree that there was categorization of IDPs. And part of that categorization is also what informed what kind of compensation they were getting. There are people who proved that they were actually chased out of their chambers. There are others who are living in shopping centers in rentals. And all of them had to prove what kind of IDPs they were. Of course, they were not being given uniform compensation. But for convenience, the NASA side wants to make it look like all from a certain region got 400,000 and others from elsewhere are getting 52,000. The truth of the matter is that even those who are being accused of having gotten 400,000, not all of them got, depending on the category of IDPs where they belonged. Then I also want to say this, that different is this, that in 2013, right. it was only five years after the post-election violence. It's important to note that the Kisses border 
the Kipchoges. And by that, it means that there was some hostility, especially in the neighboring Chepilat, of course, is the hotspot mm, area. Sotik. because mm -hmm. Yeah, because they border, it's a shopping center that is shared by right. both communities. So that brought some element of antagonism, which even after five years, we saw the effect by the numbers. But now we are talking about 10 years later. Mm -hmm. So the thing is, emotions have gone down. The government has shown some remorse, and it has also shown some response to the issues that have been raised Fair that enough. came out of it. So right. I believe Fair we enough. are going to get more than the 30% we got in Kisi, right. courtesy of all that that I've said. Great, so yes. we'll, 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 we'll wait and see about that. I love uh, Benson to say, have the last one. In 30 minutes only, what is your take on this issue? 30 seconds. Uh, 30 seconds, uh, Ben. <laughs> I, I, I agree. Uh, uh, personally, uh, Ben, what I would like to say, regardless of the faction of where you are, whether you're in NASA, whether you're in Jubilee, whether you're in an independent candidate, I, I, I wish all the candidates would do the process in a very peaceful manner without causing any havoc to Kenyans. Kenya is bigger than us, and in August, I believe that the community, my, my constituents in Marakwet West, will consider me as the next member of parliament so that I can address the issues. And I support the president and the deputy president given that I'm coming from a region where it's a jubilee stronghold. Thank you so much. Thank you, Benson, even though you're campaigning on my show. <laughs> as Benson Chesereka, an independent candidate for Marakwet West, uh, Dismas Mokua, political risk analyst, political analyst has been uh, Wheeler, as well as uh, jubilee strategist uh, Mutinda Kavamba. Thank you, gentlemen, for making time to be with us here as we discuss the big political Headlines and stories from the campaign trail 57 days to the August 8th general election as Kenyans are prepared to decide who their next set of leaders will be. That's why we leave it on the program this morning. Be sure to join us every Sunday morning from 10 a.m. to 12 noon. This is Kenya's only and premier mass Sunday morning political show. That's why we leave it. I'm Ben Kitili. Bye for now. As, as always, we'll leave you with Siasa Files. This time in the run-up to the 2002 general election where the veteran politician then, the late Kiheke Kimani was speaking about the soon-to-be-formed National Rainbow Coalition.